Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Dan with Train Control Systems. In this video we will be covering Traditional Throttle Mode. Traditional Throttle Mode is a feature of TCS WOW Sound Decoders which was designed to emulate the operation of DC locomotives. Traditional Throttle Mode on a WOW Sound Decoder sets the chuff intensity or prime mover notch based on the speed step rather than the load on the engine as in prototype mode. What this means is that you will not have the dynamic range of sounds you would in prototype throttle mode. In addition to speed controlled sound, traditional throttle mode also sets momentum to near zero values. What this means is that the speed of your locomotive or consist will react directly to changes on your throttle. This feature of traditional throttle mode is similar to switching momentum. Like in all of our throttle modes, you may still switch between momentum modes or manually adjust the prime mover notch or Johnson bar. While in traditional throttle mode, you are not expected to use TCS's braking feature. On a WOW diesel decoder, the speed step at which each notch transition occurs may be customized via 4CV programming. You can see on this slide the 4CV programming operation required to modify the notch transition set points. CV202 in this scenario will select the notch to change with a range of values from 31 to 38. CV204 will select which of the 128 speed steps you want the transition to occur. The active notch will be determined by the set point the throttle has passed. For example, if the locomotive is set to speed step 5 of 128, the active notch will be 1. But if the locomotive is changed to speed step 6, the prime mover will step up to notch 2. Traditional throttle mode is commonly used for consisted locomotives, where the locomotives will be notched together. Additionally, you do not need to worry about difference in momentum. You may need to speed match your locomotives, which can be done using audio assist, however. In this example, TCS's manual notching feature is a great add-on. You can use the manual notching feature in conjunction with traditional throttle mode to simulate the dynamic changes in the load. Doing so will keep your locomotives from casually idling around your track. To demonstrate the features of traditional throttle mode, let's head over to the test track. Here we are once again at the test track. To demonstrate traditional throttle mode, we first need to change this WOW sound decoder to that mode. To do so, we'll enter audio assist and go to the throttle mode menu. So we're going to press button 8 four times, then button 4 for additional options, and button 1 for throttle modes. So now we'll push button 8. Night. Welcome to audio assist. And button 4. Use button. Use button. To choose a throttle button mode, use, but, use buttons 1 and 2 to select the operational mode We're you want to run tradition. the locomotive. Prototype op traditional throttle operation. And push button 8 to save. Saved. And button 0 to exit. Bye. With traditional throttle mode activated, let's observe the momentum has indeed been reduced. And to do so, I'm going to rapidly increase the throttle to 80 of 128. As you can see, the engine took no time to reach that speed. And now if I zero the throttle, it stops on a dime. If you are a kind of modeler who prefers uh, DC style operation, then this is going to be the kind of mode you want to use. To demonstrate the notching feature, we're going to slowly step up the speed so you can hear each notch transition step. Right now, this engine is at the default settings for notch transitions so they will occur as follows. Notch 1 becomes active at speed step 1, notch 2 at speed step 6, notch 3 at speed step 13, notch 4 at speed step 20, notch 5 at speed step 27, notch 6 at speed step 34, notch 7 at speed step 41, and notch 8 at speed step 48. As mentioned before, the notch does not become active until the set speed has been reached. Let's demonstrate that now. If I go up to speed step 1, you may have heard that the prime mover notched into notch 1. With certain prime movers this is easier to hear, um, but you may have heard where it kind of stepped down and now we're in notch 1. So if I go between speed step 1 and speed step 5, we will remain in notch 1. But once I switch up here to notch, or speed step 6, you heard that the prime mover notched back up. 
So now we'll go up to speed step 13. All right, heard it notch up there. And now speed step 20. And it notched up again. Conversely, once the speed drops below the set point of the notch transition, the active notch will decrease. So let's drop down a speed step here. And as you heard there, we have indeed notched back down. And that, of course, applies to all the rest of the speed steps and notch transitions. If you want to change the notch transition speed steps, you do need to do so via 4CV programming using the CVs shown earlier. For example, if you find you do not plan to run your engine faster than speed step 40 of 128, you could move each of the notch transitions down. Keep in mind that the number in CV204 is directly correspondent to the speed step in the 128 speed step curve, with 0 and any number greater than 128 being an invalid input. If you use 28 speed step mode, the decoder will extrapolate the speed and approximate it to the 128 speed step equivalent. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to check out our other throttle mode videos, click the link in the video's description for the full playlist. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up by clicking the like button. If you want to see more videos like this from TCS, make sure you're subscribed. Leave us a comment with what you want to see next. Happy modeling.